Hello everyone and welcome to What The Math, this is Anton and today we're talking about Baspin, the only gas giant we're probably going to talk about in the series because this is the only gas giant that is actually uh, mentioned in the movies, we get to see it in the movies and we actually get to experience some of the coolest uh, storyline parts. Uh, that I've described in, in in the introduction. Basically, this is where we find out that, uh, yes, Darth Vader is uh, Luke Skywalker's father. He also loses his arm. Han Solo gets betrayed and frozen in carbonite. And all of this happens on this really unusual gas giant. And specifically in an area called Cloud City that is essentially uh, orbiting around uh, this planet in its atmosphere. Now, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to actually recreate this from scratch. I'm, I'm going to uh, show you what the actual solar system looks like here we'll also talk a little bit more about the uh, specifics about you know the cloud city we will talk about the industry that goes on here and so on and so forth so let's start by basically going into the orbits here i just want to see if this is working for us and all right so the orbits are showing but my orbit is unfortunately a little bit too short so i'm going to remove these moons for a second because otherwise they're just going to fly away from us we're going to recreate them later and let's take Bespin and actually the reason I want to keep this particular gas giant is because Bespin is technically red-ish and it's kind of um uh, it's it's basically a, an unusually lucky thing that as soon as I created uh, this particular gas giant it turned out to be red and it's also not very large so here it's only about seven times uh, size of earth and in uh, Star Wars uh, universe, um, as I've read more about this gas giant, I realized that because of its uh, because of the size of its moons, it's probably not very large. So its moons are actually really really small in comparison to Jupiter and Saturn, at least. Uh, so we're going to go in here and change the um, orbital parameters. Uh, specifically, we're going to go into the part that says uh, orbital period right here. I'm going to change this to almost 12 years. So let's just say 12 years here, because that's how long it takes for Bespin to, um, uh, 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 sorry, planet Bespin to orbit around star called Bespin. And this is the star called Bespin right there. However, its rotational period is actually a lot faster than this. As a matter of fact, it takes it about half a day, half a real life day to rotate. So it's about 12 hours days on, on Bespin, which means that you'll get to actually witness uh, sunlight and darkness within the same day as it would be on Earth. You may have noticed already that the many uh, stars and um, important planets in Star, War Star Wars Galaxy and Star Wars Universe usually have the same names. So this is the case here as well. Both the star and the main planet uh, that we're interested in have the same name so but this is not the only planet here as a matter of fact there are more planets and we're going to place them right now we're going to zoom in on Bespin and we're going to place a randomly generated rocky star relatively close to Bespin because that's really where it is located and this first planet is called Miser or Miser. I think it's Miser. And Miser is basically a very, 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 very hot planet. It's not hot yet because I've just placed it. Uh, actually, it should be hotter than this. So let's let's place it a little bit closer. All right. So I think this is a little bit closer to reality. It was almost 500 degrees Celsius on the uh, surface. Uh, pointed toward the star and uh, a little bit cooler on the other side and uh, this planet miser is important because this is where most of the metal that was used in the construction of the cloud city came from as a matter of fact this is a mining colony or basically it was a mining colony where um, because this is an iron rich world filled with different metals um, much of the materials in the construction of the other um, things in the solar system came from here from this really scary looking really really hot but somewhat beautiful and somewhat unusual planet called Miser. There's also another planet. This is planet number two, a little bit farther away. And this planet is a volcanic world called Orin. Now, this is a very unusual planet because, um, if, first of all, it actually has a very eccentric orbit. I'm going to show you how eccentric it is. Um, so it, it has a very um, sort of close periapsis to the star and very far apoapsis. And uh, the other thing about this planet is that uh, twice a year, it actually passes through the um, asteroid belt located somewhere in this region. We're going to actually build that right now. Uh, we're going to make an asteroid belt that this planet is going to pass through. 
And so here is that belt and it does have a name and this uh, particular belt is called the Velser's Ring. And uh, Velser's Ring is basically, um, it was supposed to become a gas giant but it didn't really become one because of the interaction with other planets. And uh, twice a year Orin goes through this belt and um, very likely experiences uh, some collisions with asteroids and possibly gets bombarded by smaller particles as well. But this ring is also used for mining, so a lot of the materials uh, that are used on uh, the um, on Bespin in the Cloud City are actually, they, they come from here, they're actually mined in this region. And so if we actually accelerate this a little bit, we'll hopefully get to see how it passes through. Uh, this ring and we might even experience a collision or two and um, now uh, Orin is actually a, a much hotter world than uh, Miser as a matter of fact uh, the atmosphere of Orin is filled with uh, uh, Volcanic eruptions and ash and sooth so here nothing would actually survive on its surface because it is a pretty uh, scary pretty dangerous world and here we go with the passage through the asteroid field. Let's see if actually something does happen. We might experience a collision, it, it, although it's kind of unlikely because I didn't really place that many asteroids. And even in real world, if we were to pass through the asteroid belt, uh, our planet would not really experience collisions because of the distances between the asteroids. The asteroids are actually a lot farther away than the movies make us believe. And as you can see, it just passed through the belt with no collisions at all. And this is actually quite likely that uh, what would actually happen. Uh, it would disturb other asteroids and maybe some of them would actually instead collide with uh, other planets including uh, Bespin, but um, it, here we didn't really experience anything and that's that's the reality. And now let's actually talk about Bespin itself, so the beautiful gas giant of Bespin. Now, first of all, it did have moons, we don't really know how many exactly, but there is at least two of them that are named and we're going to place them right now. And these two moons are right here, you can see them orbiting around Bespin. They were called Drudona and Hagard. Uh, these were also known as the twins and for some reason their orbit is changing, but I think it's because they're get getting wobbly interacting with some other things in this particular uh, galaxy I've created. Anyway, so yes, uh, these two were very small. Uh, uh, Hagard was only about 5 kilometers in, in diameter and uh, Drudona was about 2.5 kilometers in diameter. So they, they were really tiny and it would be really difficult to see them uh, from uh, Cloud City because of the thickness of atmosphere and because their size was very, very, very tiny. And both of these were covered in, in ice and specifically Hagard, the one that is on the outside here, was actually covered in green ice. So this right here was all green ice. Unfortunately, we can't really recreate this in Universe Sandbox 2, but imagine it was actually green. And the gas giant of Bespin itself uh, was um, basically a mining colony where they were mining something called Tibana gas. Now, Tibana gas is a type of a gas that was used in uh, certain weaponry to um, basically turn the uh, explosion inside your blaster into a laser. And uh, specifically, this gas would make it something like four times more powerful than usual, so it was, it was highly sought out after uh, by various parties, including obviously the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. And Tibana gas um, is produced by uh, creatures that are actually, uh, they live on this planet, they live in the atmosphere of this planet. They're a uh, type of floaters that basically live in the upper atmospheres. Unfortunately, we can't really see them here, but it, they would basically float through the upper atmosphere and produce this gas. And uh, I think one of the creatures that produced them was called a Beldon, which was a very, very large floating creature that would um, basically uh, move around the atmosphere area and would uh, belch out or excrete this gas that was then um, uh, harvested by various species on um, that were that basically lived in the upper atmosphere. Now, this is actually the interesting part. What we get to see in the movie is the region of the atmosphere right between the very toxic lower region and uh, very thin upper region that was was referred to as Bespin Life Zone. This was actually the only area of um, a gas giant that was uh, had a good enough pressure, good enough atmosphere, and basically everything was just perfect for life to survive. But if you were to move a little bit lower, you would actually reach really toxic area. If you were to go a little bit higher, you would reach the very thin atmosphere where nothing would really survive. 
And this is, of course, very similar to uh, other gas giants and other planets that we have in our universe as well. If we were to look at, for example, Jupiter, and let's actually just place uh, Jupiter here in the distance and take a look at this really quickly as well. So this is our Jupiter, and Jupiter is also a gas giant, and somewhere in the atmosphere of Jupiter, there's a region of space where the pressure is just right for us to survive. Now, it may not have oxygen, and it may not have other gases that we need to survive, but it would have enough pressure for us to actually just go outside, um, if as long as we're on some sort of a floating colony thingy that flies through its upper atmosphere and floats above um, the rest of Jupiter, and we could actually uh, live there using oxygen masks and nothing else really as long as uh, the temperature there is also relatively good now we don't know uh, we don't actually know uh, what the temperature on Jupiter is it's very likely to be very very cold possibly in, in something along this uh, minus 60 minus 70 degrees Celsius but on Bespin the temperature was just right so Bespin was not far enough from its um, star and also experienced quite a lot of other con uh, favorable conditions that made the temperature and the pressure in those particular life zone regions to be just perfect. And because of this, there were actually many different species uh, of animals that floated through the atmosphere. Some of them were called uh, Tibonooks, some of them were called Velkers, there were also something called Rocks. And uh, all of these species actually um, evolved and lived in that uh, region of upper atmosphere. And what's really interesting is that most of the things on this particular gas giant, specifically its color and the fact that uh, we have this gas that can be mined on this uh, gas giant, all of these things are actually produced by life on it. So, for example, the pinkish color is because of the algae in the atmosphere of this planet. And the gas, as I mentioned, was produced by something called Beldons. And this by itself makes this a very unique, very kind of an interesting gas giant and planet in general, because uh, this is essentially a planet that is completely uh, modified and changed in a sense uh, by the life in its upper atmosphere. Now, whether we actually have this type of life on other planets in our solar system is still a mystery. We will not really know for many, many years until we go there and try to get into the atmosphere and explore it a little bit more. Uh, but uh, there, there were various theories, including theory of possibly creating uh, this kind of a floating colony on Venus, which also has very high pressure and temperature on the bottom, but has this kind of a area in its up, um, upper atmosphere where we could actually easily survive as well. And so this, in a sense, makes Bespin a pretty unique and pretty awesome world to explore in Star Wars uh, Galaxy. And I really hope one day we'll get to actually experience this in one of the video games where we'll get to actually visit this beautiful planet and possibly even fly through its atmosphere and do some crazy things like like fight the Empire in an X-Wing flying through the Cloud City. Although I'm pretty sure there is probably already a game that has done this, I just can't really think of it right now. If you do know of any really cool games in Star Wars universe that does have a battle above the skies of Bespin, please let me know, because it would be really fun to explore a Cloud City battle in the sky of Bespin. And anyway, so I think that's all I wanted to mention about Bespin and about this particular system. Um, the rest we actually know from the movies. We know that uh, Lando Calrissian was the governor of Cloud City. And then um, after the betrayal of Han Solo, I guess he felt really bad. And so he joined the Rebel Alliance and uh, eventually became the general of the Rebel Alliance that we'll get to actually uh, talk about more in the future videos. And then he, of course, participated in the Battle of Endor and destroyed a second Death Star, uh, about which I talked in my previous video that you can find in the playlist. Anyway, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned a little bit more about Bespin Star, Bespin uh, Gas Giant and Bespin System in general. Uh, I'm going to show you the location of Bespin one more time so you get to compare it to the rest of the stars in the uh, uh, Star Wars universe. So we have Endor that's right here. We have Dagobah, uh, we have Naboo, and in the center there is um, Tithus, Coruscant, and this is where the black hole is. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, share it with your friends, and also subscribe to this channel if you still haven't. Don't forget to like this video, and don't forget to leave a comment suggesting what other Star Wars uh, planets and Star Wars solar systems would you like me to explore. The next one coming up is going to be a little bit more scary, a little bit more dangerous, but I'm not going to spoil for you what it is yet. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next video. Game you later, and bye-bye. Thank you.